Hello everyone, this is Mikhail Supreme from Night and Day Anime Studios and I'm here once again to show you how to draw video game characters and my subject of today is going to be based on from that uh, ultimate crossover fighting game Super Smash Brothers that has been published and developed by Nintendo company that features uh, primarily features characters from various Nintendo franchise video game characters uh, the first release of Super Smash Bros. has been around since January 21st, 1999, which has been on several console platforms, like, uh, for example, Nintendo 64, the IQ Player, GameCube, the Wii, Nintendo 3DS, the Wii U, and Nintendo Switch. So, let's begin, shall we? If you're watching this tutorial, you can do two things. You can follow along, or if you want to watch my video just for um, help you out to get some tips and expertise on a few things to polish your own artwork, that's also fine. Uh, basically, what I normally would always have on hand is a uh, number two pencil and uh, some markers, pens, things of that nature. So, anyway, let's begin, shall we? These classes pretty much go by pretty fast, so I'm going to start off with that uh, miserable plumber as uh, King Koopa, King Koopa, excuse me, or um, you know his various enemies, which mostly say Mario. So I'm going to see. I'm going to show you a couple of my tools here. It's going to be the couple of pencils, and uh, I also sometimes do recommend uh, having um, a rubber eraser when it comes to these things. So, let's see here. I never really use the, the eraser on the number two pencils, because they always leave like a paint pencil mesh or, or a rubber burn or ash, too much ash around there, or smears. So I like to use a rubber eraser. If you don't have that, you can always go to your local art store and pick one up. And I have some uh, markers, Sharpie for boldness and strokes, things like that. And uh, also I have like a very fine point pen marker that help for a nice good line, clean line details. So anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to begin. As always, I like to like feel out the page and see start at the dead center. And uh, mainly what I like to do is I like to start with the head, obviously, the most fun part of drawing is the face. And how I normally do is I like to start with a, a very light, light circle. Now, I don't put, apply any pressure onto the paper. I may do a little bit darker so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to pretty much put a line going horizontally across the circle. And since the face is not like frontal, I'm going to give you like more of a, what they call it, the three-quarter view or a side view. This will be for the eyes. And I'm going to add another line in the second half of the circle. That line will be where the nose will be at, and that will be where the mouth will be at. So right here, I'm just marking where I'm going to be placing Mario's huge nose. Just mainly just a circle. And then these lines here, that's where the eye line. So I'm just marking where the eyes will be placed. Make sure that there are space correctly, equally. I'm going to place a circle right upon that uh, on that line there. These will be for his eyes. Now I'm going to do see, make sure it's spaced out correctly, equally away from the center line, so you don't have to worry about the eyes being too spaced away or too close. Now I'm going to add just a circular line above the eyes there. These are going to be representing. Mario's eyebrows 
same thing, make sure they're spaced evenly. Now I'm going to put his signature mustache right under his nose. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm going to start working on the eyes. <laughs> So now I'm going to be adding just another larger circle around his eyes, irises, his blue up, white, blue eyes. There we go. Now I'm going to add in the dark irises within the eyes there. I'm going to add a little bit more girth and size to the nose. It's okay. At this stage, it's okay to make modifications now. See, because if we go too deep into it, like say we started inking uh, Mario character and, and we know the nose is too small and we want to make the modifications now, that would have been difficult. So now I'm going to add his signature mustache under his nose, which is mostly just going to be, for now, just a, uh, like a moon shape. Kind of like a boomerang shape or under his nose. I'm not going to worry about details of the shape of the mustache just yet. Notice how I have it as looking at the reference. The, eye, the mustache is past the eye line. Now I'm going to try a place where the mouth is going to be at. So right here I'm going to be adding his chin. Just a more of another circular motion. That's going to be where the mouth is going to be at. So right under his chin, uh, excuse me, right under his mustache, pardon, I'm going to start adding the lip. He has a nice grand smile there. There we go. You notice how it's pretty much where the mouth is, like right under the eyes. And then just check, make sure that everything is even out space-wise space over the face. Now, see, I'm using the eye line that I use. I'm going to mark where the ears are going to be at. So I'm just going to add up a nice little circular motion shape around where that is. Usually right where the eye line begins and right where the nose line ends, that's usually where the distance of how big the ears should be really. Now I'm going to start shaping out the face. Because obviously Mario's face is not a full circle, you know, there is some kind of anatomy in there. You know, if you see the cheekbone, the chin, things like that. So you have to make sure you look at all that. There's not just, it's not a perfect circle, his, his face. So now I'm just adding the next side of his ear. Usually, of course, since it's a three-quarter, not a, face, a frontal face, um, the ear is just not going to be fully shown. So you just want to just put partially of the ear there. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding the line for the rim of his hat. It's usually right above, right above his eyebrows, so he can't miss that. Just add like a line going straight across his forehead, past his head, and uh, it's usually right past his ear there. So right there is going to be where the rim. I'm adding more hair to the side there. There we go. Adding the rim of his hat. Now going right across his cranium once again. Now I'm going to add his sideburns toward the end there. Just a square, a rectangle I should say, shape is good for now. Don't worry about details. Now I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start thickening the eyebrows, that line I just created earlier. I'm just going to rinse and repeat, follow the line motion, and just from the from the uh, from the center going upward across the top of his eyes, going back down to the side of his head. There, you see they kind of look like moon moon shapes. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding this hat. So right from where the ear is, if you look at the reference, onto my right hand side there, I'm going up, 
just a curve stop toward where the, the sideburns end and then I'm going to add another higher hump going upward again in more of a rounded formation going up notice how I'm doing this very lightly just in case I if I mess up I can always fix and erase easily without leaving too much of a mark but I go ahead and just add the shape that's needed for to formulate the hat there we go Now I'm going to add that logo design, the circle on top of his front of his hat there. And then later on, well, actually right after I'm done with that, I'm going to just add such a, uh, just the M. Nothing crazy, just a line work to show where the M is going to be placed for now. And then, you know, when I'm ready, I'll just fully detail it. So now I'm going to start adding a little bit more details to the face. First, I'm going to start adding that inner canal. So I'm going to go up within the ear, going up in a curve, going right down. Like I'm forming like a pretty much uh, uh, a reverse six. Now I'm going to add another line in there to show the inner canal. Add a little bit more to the mustache. Just adding just a little bit of details. Now, I'm going to use the size of his head, and I'm going to use that measurement to figure out how big his body is going to be at. I really think that, you know, the size of his head is basically the same size of his body torso. So right where that line I just marked up, that's where his crotch, his crotch will be. So now I'm just adding the simple line work onto his uh, shoulders and the spine line. The spine line is basically the center of his body and going right down to the crotch adding the, a little bit of line work for the for the body, shape of the body kind of like a circular bean shape for now. Then I'm adding the line across to show where the, the overall is going to end you know, the top of it where the buttons will be at. And then now I'm going to add his, his, his first fist that's facing us. It's like right under his eye and the tip of his mustache downward. So I'm going to add a circle there. And then I'm going to add another circle right on the other side. That's going to be representing his other fist. And that line is going to represent his arm. Right down from the, the ear, I forgot the piece of his hair that's in the back of his head. So let's add a little line work there. Now that's this circle here is going to be representing his shoulder. And then this line here is going to be representing his arm, his elbow going bent, and then right into the circle that be his hand. Now I'm going to be adding some line work just to represent his legs. Now, I know a lot of people just want to just get at it, but trust me, if you follow these tools that I'm showing you, which I'm already adding just a rectangle to shape his legs out, and a circle for his bent leg to have his foot behind him as he's running, trust me, it would make things a lot easier, and you can guarantee a very powerful outcome finish by utilizing shapes and layout line work uh, to pretty much show you how everything's going to fit on the page. Uh, you're going to feel more confident in adding those lines for the detailing and uh, strokes into it. Now I'm going to be doing is working on the hand. That line I just did, that's going to be representing where his knuckles are, those circles. And I'm going to be adding three lines going down, separating the circle into four fingers. And I'm going to zoom in. These are the knuckles. And these are the lines that could be representing the fingers, separating it. And this other now oval is going to be his thumb. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working on that glove, adding another circular motion 
around where the wrist is. Now, you know, of course, obviously, Marius has not a perfect circle. Now it's time to feel a little more confident in adding the line details to make it look like a hand, or at least close enough to the reference at hand. No pun intended. Well, pun is intended, but why not? Let's just let's go with it. <laughs> so now I'm just going, just adding the, the circles, like, you know, like more rounded edges to show where the fingers are bending into the fists. And then adding the necessary line details to show the folds within the hand that make it the fist. Now I'm just adding a little bit of detail to his costume. The overall is obviously going over his shoulders. Let's zoom out a little bit. This is where his armpit is. Now I'm going to curve over his shoulder and then down to his elbow and into his wrist. Now I'm going to add just a line to show the arm where it's bent. Another line, rinse and repeat to follow the line that's over his shoulder. Adding the button a circle and then over his next shoulder adding where the overalls is actually connecting to the buttons over his shoulder now I'm going to start working on the next arm that line that I just used that line is just there to help me direct myself where the arm is going toward his hand and then I'm going to add the details to the glove another circle motion Now I'm just going to add three circles because one of the fingers are hidden. That will be where the finger is going to be bending downward into the fist. Of course, obviously it's not a perfect circle. You want to show where the hand, the fingers are folding into the fist. And then this is going to go upward. And then outward again in a curved motion again. That will be the thumb. The thumb will be meeting out into the palm. There we go. See? I use the circle to shape out the fist perfectly. Now I'm just going to add in a little more detail to the costume. Circle it down the torso. Not flat. You see, notice how I'm not using straight lines. Everything is mainly is curved and whatnot to make it give it that nice 3D look. Don't make it look too flat. You don't want lines too straight, too flat looking. You want to add curve, like see how the legs, they were like flat line rectangles. Now I'm curving it out a little bit by the thigh, going downward into the ankle area. And see, I'm not doing a straight line. I'm going curving upward by where the foot is. All these type of things you need to show so you can get a very powerful outcome finish where basically showing a little bit of anatomy and a little bit 3D-ish. And the shoes, again, curved upward downward again see no flat lines it doesn't look like a square like a square I'm having the um, having the curve upward so you can see under a shoe slant it downward see that this will be the bottom of the shoe here Now, I kind of messed up here, but that's okay. Again, this is the stage where you should mess up so you can make those fixings uh, when you need to. Nobody's perfect. Just keep going. And, of course, I know I had, it was way too straight, so I had to curve it upward a little bit to show a little bit of angle. Now, I'm going to add, I'm going to add a line following the same line that I did to the bottom of the shoe to show a little more details to his shoe.
Actually, now I'm going to work on to the next leg. Once again, you see that it was a circle, and now I'm utilizing just simple line work and details to make it look like a leg bent to or toward its back. Look at this, see? Add the heel to a shoe. It starts right from the from its from its backside going downward. Look at that. So far, so good. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to add just some little necessary details to the face. You'll see in a moment what I mean. It's time to erase some of this line work that we don't need anymore. That's why I can't stress this any further. When you're at this stage, make sure when you do the rough draft, do it very lightly. Can't. I can't stress that any further. Don't add any really hard pressure onto the paper. So when you do erase the line work, uh, you don't have to worry about too much of a mess, smearing. Plus, you will be a lot, a lot of line work uh, in sketch mode. So you don't have to worry about so much of a, um, having the pencil being, the pencil being smeared or smudges, uh, any type of unnecessary burnt marks from your eraser. That takes points off. It was a 10, now it's a 7. We lost 3 points due to all the smearing and smudging that you have going on there. And I do, I, I will have to tell you, um, yes, you will lose a little bit of uh, lines here and there that you want to keep. Um, just render them again, you know, just retrace uh, with your pencils if you're looking just to do a pencil drawing today. Uh, but right now I'm going to be doing next after this, cleaning up the artwork a little bit is I'm going to um, ink, but I'm going to add just a little bit of detail first. So now we're going to go ahead and start inking. This part is just mainly just tracing over my pencils, all the dominant lines that I, I kept of course, obviously, all the sketch work lines that I um, that was underneath it is all gone for now. I mean, well, it is gone. So I'm just going to do is just keep the lines that I want and just trace over with my pen. I'm using a fine point pen. Um, as right now, I believe it is a, a I believe it is a size point three uh, size pen. It's good for, again, for simple line detail, especially for face. I will never use like a Sharpie um, to detail the face. It's, the brush is way too thick, and it can't guarantee a, a good look um, if you mess up onto that. So right now I use a couple of lines, which I call hash lines, onto the eyebrows. Just line works going up and down uh, just to color it in a little bit. And, of course, obviously I... Um, color in the irises and leave like a little light space, empty space there just to show a little um, anime eye glare, you know, that just shows into the reference um, to the right, you can see what I mean by that. So now I'm going to be doing this just, again, I'm just going to be tracing over my line work. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just fast forward this a little bit because it's, this does take time to do, um, but you know, on your end, you could obviously pause and uh, you can uh, ink if you are inking. If not, you can uh, skip ahead, and I'm just going to fast forward just a little bit. So, as you can see here, I look at the reference. I counted each circular motion that's uh, around its nose, around the mustache. It has like six curves there. So right now, I'm just added that. See, I put one, two, three, four, five, six curves right around where the mustache is. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six curves around the mustache. 
and then I'm going to add those little hash lines, uh, cross hatching lines uh, around the mustache. You're going to see it's a little colored in and it darkened. So let's put a smile on that face. I'm going ahead and fixing that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. You can see um, a little bit uh, further. I'm going to be tracing every over everything. Added like the round of sideburns, a little the hump details. Now I'm going to be using the Sharpie to go ahead and add in like the dark strokes outline. Yeah, this method usually makes it pop. So you go right ahead and you show. Now I'm just adding the details for the M. Uh, of course, right now, I'm just going to go and fast forward this in a bit so we can move forward to the next. So, I mean, as you can see there, um, you can see that I started off with pencil sketch, laying out the design, and uh, also adding the necessary details to make it look more like the reference that I uh, have onto the right-hand side. And I use a fine point pen for face detail and, of course, the Sharpie. Uh, for the outer stroke line work to make it pop off the page and you'll see in a minute um, how it looks in the finish All right, not bad if I do say so myself. It looks great. Everything looks okay to me. I mean, I don't know how yours look like, but uh, hopefully it looks great just as I have it here. Now I'm just going to use my rubber eraser to um, go right ahead and uh, get rid of some of those extra sketches that I may have into my artwork still. That's one thing I do like about the rubber eraser is um, it doesn't leave too much of a mess. It doesn't really smear so much of your pencil work. And then get rid of some of that pencil sketch that's right under the ink. So it looks a lot more cleaner with just the inks. Now, normally I would 
you know, add more detail to this and um, add more um, cross hatch lining to make it pop more whatnot. But uh, this will be a very long uh, drawing session when it, if it if I had to do that. And remember, every artist always signs his artwork. Yeah, I really believe this is a, a finished piece. So you can now, if I wanted to, I can like basically color it with markers and color it. I use like everything here that needs to be done so far just for just by inking it. So I'm gonna start working on to the next drawing. Another character from uh, from Super Smash Bros. Always have some paper under under it, especially if you're doing some heavy market marking. Uh, make sure you have some paper under it, because it does bleed. Unless you have like a real good Bristol paper. So now what I'm going to be drawing is onto the session here. Is going to be one of the uh, inklets that's on the on Super Smash. And how I normally do is I always start with the head. I like to start with a circle. And I want to add that eye line going across um, horizontally down across the face. Since the head is kind of tilted because it's like more on top of the shoulder there, it's not going to be another it's not going to be another frontal face uh, view. It's more going to be more of a side, another kind of tilted side view in a way. And I center uh, the line going downward to split the face in the middle vertically. And I add this next line here for the neck. I'm going to measure the head, and that's going to be where the waistline will be at, going downward there. This is where the waistline, this is the tilt into the waist. And then this little box shape here under his neck is going to be the body, and the circle here under it, but the waistline will be the lower torso. The circle here will be the shoulder. I want to add just a line going downward. I see that the elbow, the arm cross are over the mid of his body, upper body, going downward. That will be the arm. And then this right here will be the um, the leg going bent forward. That little dot that's going to be the knee. Another line from the lower torso. That will be the next knee there. This one will be a little bit of a challenge, so I hopefully... You guys are warmed up. Uh, the Mario definitely was a lot more easier. Uh, this will be a little bit more challenging because of the weird uh, form of the pose, especially with the legs. This is why I kind of like this pose for a good challenge after the Mario one. Now that your hands are all warmed up and you got the blood circulating in your fingers. So make sure you follow what I'm doing as we speak. If you see the pose, you just make sure that it is proportionally correct. Um, that you know you gotta have the crook and the the body's kind of like slanted forward a little bit. So now I'm gonna work on the face. I'm gonna add another second line under the eye line there. That's where the nose will be at, and that will be where the eyes will be at. So I'm gonna add a circle here, right between those lines. Now I'm going to add the nose right under there. More just a circular motion. There we go. And then she has kind of like a, a smirk, a little arrogant smirk there. So I'm going to have it going right under the nose, right there, just a line. Now I'm going to add the necessary line shapes for the uh, for the eyes. She kind of looks like she's wearing like some kind of like a mask type thing over her eyes. Kind of reminds me of like a, a Robin character from Batman and Robin. So I'm just going to add like more like the irises there. Darken the circle in the middle there.
Yeah, let's zoom in just a little bit there. There we go. Now I'm going to start working on the shape of the mat, that eye mask that's around her eyes there. I admit it's a little bit messy, but uh, just bear with me for uh, for my madness. I'm trying to shape out the the mask there. It's kind of like a circular motion. There's a little hump there for her cheek, and it goes right upward across the bridge of her nose. And then it goes outward again in a circular motion to bomb the eye. And then it kind of meets the corner of the face there. Obviously nothing finished yet. Just going to add a little bit more detail. Show where the, around the shape of the eyes there, around, the, around her eyes there. Just be sure to, uh, when, you, when you're looking at the reference, to um, make sure that you get the expression correctly. She has like her eyebrows going downward toward the center of her face there. They kind of look like teardrops, so I've kind of referenced that into my drawing. Now I'm going to shape out their, her head. Now I'm going to try and see if I can work on the ears a little bit. But um, just the, uh, just the, um, a little bit of advanced note, note to yourself there. Uh, I'm going to be erasing these ears in a moment, like a minute, but when, you know, I'm just, I'm right now I'm trying to fill out the, how the look of the character is right now at this moment, especially trying to lay out the design of the hair, but I should have did the hair first. So I'm adding like the line work of the hair. I want to add a little bit more uh, girth on top of the hair on the head because I don't want the hair to look too flat on top of the head. It's this a cranium under the hair there, so you want to make sure that it's um, a little bit more, a little bit bigger than that circle that we have there. So you're gonna see in a, in a minute that I might, you know, I definitely would have to cut off, um, erase the the ears there. But again, this is where you need to uh, make those modifications at this stage of anything. Now I'm just adding those split ends on her bangs of her hair. As you can see, yep, have to erase the ears. Um, the hair got in the way. It's a lot more hair than I thought you know, to begin with. But again, you know, don't worry about it. Again, nobody's perfect. You just have to like, you know, go with the with the punches and uh, try and see if you, uh, you know, you can have to you can make any uh, modifications to make it look like what it need to look like. So as you can see, that I'm adding more of uh, to the skull there. And more for the hair there. Make it a little more girthy. You don't want it to look too small. Um, you want to make sure it looks like there is something on top of her head. You don't want to make it look too flat either.
Now, right here, see, I have it like on, like a more of a circular motion, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, again, not flat. I have no flat lines going through these drawings. Everything is curved from like you even see from the tip of the ear there to like the, the curved motion of the hair going upward a little bit. And same thing again, I'm going to be doing on the other side. See, everything is basically curved. Now I'm going to be working on the torso. Um, what I usually call from those line work that I just did is what I call usually call adding meat to the bones. So I'm just going to flesh it out. Start adding details to the costume. I just decided to add some music, so hopefully you guys can hear it. Yeah, so this is going to be a lot more challenging than the Mario. Um, adding like the, the backpack tank of uh, ink. Usually, as you can see there, I basically just use a rectangle shape uh, behind her, and then now I'm going to um, go ahead and start working on the on her lower torso there by the hips, bent downward, and then again, like I said, I'm adding meat to the bones because it was a line there, so now I'm just going to just follow the lines that I left for myself and just shape it out to the best of my ability. Again, no straight lines. Everything is basically on a curve uh, mental note uh, for when it comes to the line work here. This is going to be where the shorts going to end under the leg. I'll be the crotch right there. From there, another leg is going to be going downward. Now I'm going to be adding the next line work again just following the lines that I left on myself to uh, to know what motion I will be going um, this one here is a little bit uh, a little bit back this one is more of a back leg so um, you know the pants leg is going to be a little bit lower than the first one there adding in the calf
just making sure I check on all the details for the costume, where all the line work necessary lines supposed to be, like the stripes on her on her pants. Now I want to go to the hands. This, you know, this part was a little bit challenging, trying to um, make up the detail line work for the gun and stuff like that. I'm very hesitant to start, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to start with the um, the orange area of the gun there. It's just usually just a more of a circle. Shaping out again, utilizing shapes into your artwork would help you tenfold, believe me. Uh, you draw them very lightly onto the page, shape out the, the artwork. Don't try to like do it from line to line and whatnot. Unless you are blessed with the greatest art skills ever, every artist, amateur or even professionals use this methods to utilize shapes to get a very powerful outcome finish when it comes to um, you know drawing from the reference you know when trying to draw like different difficult parts of uh, the artwork Yeah, right here for like uh, pretty much the, um, the part of the gun there I'm using like more like a triangular motion like a V shape going downward circle circle Yeah, that circle motion is going to be part of the hair that's behind the gun. Now, just for kicks, I'm going to add some squirt motions coming out from the pistol. Yeah, it kind of like a super soaker, but I, you know, I know what it is. It basically is based off of a super soaker. So now, I'm going to add in uh, her other hand holding the trigger. We're adding this little circular rectangle shape that would be the finger on the trigger. This next shape here is going to be the thumb holding the, the holster of the gun. That square is going to be the fingers. And there you go. That's going to be the gun there. Adding three lines there to show where the fingers are at. Now for the shoe, right wherever the ankle is, I'm going to add an uh, oval shape and just shape out the circle that I created for the gun, uh, for the sneaker, excuse me, uh, make it a little bit bigger than I normally presented it, shape it out, you know, make it look more proportioned, adding the, the shoelaces, lines going across, little design, triangle shapes for the bow, of the tied shoelaces and same thing again I'm gonna add like another circular uh, for the foot another circle show where the foot actually bend arched upon upon the ground there same thing again triangle shapes for the tied up shoelaces the shoelaces the, the aren't the entry of the shoe there circular motion 
the tongue of the shoe, adding the bottom part of the sneaker there. Yeah, it's a lot of line details here. So yeah, this is definitely uh, a challenge. Um, a lot more details than the Mario drawing that we just did. Hopefully you guys are doing good with this, or if not, at least enjoying watching this. Yeah, I'm just looking at it, just to make sure that everything is in place. I'm gonna, for this I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my pigment pen liner. And yeah, same thing again, I'm going to like basically fast forward it because you, hopefully at this point you got the idea. What I'm mainly going to be doing is, is just tracing over my, my, my pencil work. So you can see this, that it's going to look in you know, with the finish. It's now coloring into the eye lines a little bit. Shaping out the head. Use a little bit of Sharpie to uh, outline the drawing, make it pop off the page. What do you think so far? I think it's coming out great. Add some circles, show that little squid detail texture. Use a little cross hatch lines to shade in the circle that's on the on the on her hair. Give it a little nice little detail. Just adding some more line details around there. Look at that. Now I'm just going to erase the pencil sketch that's all around there. So, you know, give it a look a little bit more presentable, a little bit better. Now I'm just going to pencil in some of the detail line work that's on her shirt. Add some more cross hatch lining. All right, check it out. I signed my work, and I think it came out very cool. I mean, it was a little bit challenging than the Mario, obviously, but I think so far it does. It, I think it did come out very well. Hopefully, yours did too. Um, that's you know. So I think I'm gonna go start working on to the next one here. But let's look at it over. It looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? Alright, so let's work on the next one. And I hope you're ready to um, catch them all. We're going to start working on Lucario from Pokemon. He's uh, one of my son's favorite draw, uh, characters to use in the Smash Brothers video game. And um, I think this was a cool demonstration uh, from like more... A more human form like use the use of Mario um, or cartoon really and then we had the squid um, the, the, uh, the, the inking squid character um, from uh, the inklings um, that was more like the, a good pose study but this one actually has a very good pose as well but this is more like a animal type character so 
we're basically almost covering a lot of uh, base different studies of artwork styles when it comes to doing these three characters from the Smash Brothers game. Again, it's a crossover video game from various video games that's in the Nintendo franchise. So this is going to, you know, this was a pretty, uh, pretty interesting uh, workshop. This one will probably be uh, the next hardest one next to um, the last we just did. Um, as you can see here, I'm doing everything with a stick form. I did the circle. We got the lines going across the face. Uh, I did the spine line going down the middle so to show the center of the, of the body. And I have the leg work going upward and the arms going out because he's in that kind of like a martial art type pose. So now I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on most of the ears, kind of like just triangles on top of the, the head. And uh, so that's going to be with the ears. I'm going to be working on the next one now. So now I'm going to start shaping out the head just a little bit because obviously, like I said earlier, it's not a perfect circle head. Um, there is anatomy under there, cheekbones, uh, chin, um, frontal lobe, cranial, things like that. And so you have to really be careful with it when it comes to those kind of things to, to look at uh, for fine details. So now I'm just working on the eyes. Obviously, I'm using the the, uh, the line work for the eyes for where I to place them. And now I'm just working on to the the cosmetic design of the face. Obviously, there's like a, a black line going down the center of the face. Obviously, I have the center line to help me guide where I'm going to center that. And then now I'm going to place the the nose or the snaz of Lucario's. Kind of like a bandit with those eyes, or like a raccoon, but my son tells me he's a dog-like character, a fighter type, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm adding the irises to the eyes. It's coming out very well so far. The ram for the inner canal, kind of like using like a triangle or what I call mostly like a Star Trek. Uh, logo design <laughs> so now I'm just you know now I feel confident in what direction I'm going with the rough draft you can see that my line work came a little bit darker but I feel more confident of how I want it to look I'm gonna make this ear a little bit thicker a little bit bigger yeah there we go a little bit more proportion to look like the other ear and then he has this a little slanted downward nose under his snobs right there there we go yeah so now I'm going to start adding like those that hair dressing he has coming out from the back of his head again no straight lines no flat lines everything is all curved motion Look at that, it's all curved. Same thing right under the next one.
Yeah, so it's very quick as you can see there, you know, how I'm just using very squiggly lines to show like the textures of his fur. And then he has that spike coming out of his chest. Ouch. I wouldn't want to give this guy a hug, I tell you that. Like, uh, you know, you want to show that little texture of, his, of the fur there, and then he has like these black sleeves where his arms are coming out of. Again, I'm doing this all very lightly on the page because I'm not too confident of the line work. I want to make sure everything's looking perfectly fine to the details. He has a very skinny torso for his upper body, and then it's gonna curve downward to the end to round his waistline. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm gonna be inking this, but I, I really wish I should have left this as a pencil sketch. I think leaving it as a pencil sketch, it will look so much better than it would inked. Um, but again, you know, you'll be the judge look at it how it looks now and then you can tell me what you guys think at the of the, the outcome finish or the fun, uh, the, the final drawing of it but um, I think I should have left this as a pencil sketch you know I use the his paws just three circles and he has another spike coming out from his hand again just more squiggly lines Yeah, it looks like it's pretty cool looking. I, I like, I pretty much like how this is coming out. Now I'm gonna be working on the next hand, or arm I should say. Again, three circles for the paws, for the paw. The forearm, going right down the middle. To where the, the, the elbow bends. Now this is behind him, so it's not as close as the first arm and hand we did. So since the hand is reached outward, it's foreshortening where it's going to look bigger than the next uh, the hand that's behind him. So this one is actually more forward upward. So yeah, that's why it looks kind of weird in comparison. It's not one arm smaller than the other. It's just that in this, you know, in perspective way, the arm is facing more toward you. So it's your, it's toward you closer, ivy wise. So now I'm gonna be working on the lower torso, having the legs up there. His, his leg is kicked upward, right into his basically, you know, close to his chest, so mid section there. So now I'm gonna be working on the tail curve upward it kind of meets the hand a little bit in a way curve up and then it has like kind of like a, a scythe shape tip of its tail a little bit it's like a scythe a scythe blade if anything but you know. curve back downward and then meet right into the buttocks I'm gonna work on to the, the, the leg itself. It's not like a regular leg. This is like a canine leg. So the legs and the foot is gonna look a little bit tricky. So hopefully you paying attention and watching. It kind of has like an inward dent in uh, inward, and then 
it kind of comes out more like a um, like a, a, a rectangle shape for the middle of the foot and then I'm going to add three circles or like a, a circle motion that meet into the heel of the foot there we go and then I'm going to add three uh, two lines pardon two lines to show the separation of each toe of the paw I should say Yeah, that one doesn't show too much so we're not going to worry about that just a little bit you know show a little bit of perspective the one face the toe that's facing us it'll be a lot more view viewable now i'm going to be working on the thigh push it up a little bit so we can work more on the leg so you guys can see it. Same thing again, you gotta curve up. Then I'm gonna use more like a, a like a, a rectangle shape curve for the heel a little bit. There we go. Then it's gonna go back lower down again. Bend to it touch the ground. There we go. so far so good hopefully yours came out okay and or, or better than mine maybe <laughs> you know if you get the reference hopefully you guys are looking the reference while you're drawing just like I am doing as well so now I'm gonna start inking uh, Lucario's and uh, I'm just gonna once again fast forward to this uh, basically again I'm just tracing the artwork for my pencil sketch and whatnot I'm using the sharpie to um, make it pop off the page Picking at the, uh, the outer outlines when it comes down to it, and I'm gonna be using the fine point pen to um, detail within within the, uh, the drawing. But I'm gonna fast forward through this here, so the video won't be too long for you guys here. But you guys get the main idea how I'm utilizing shapes and line works to have a very powerful outcome finish. So. I mean, it looks good. I mean, from with the outline there, I have to admit, it does definitely looks nice. Uh, and it, it, again, you know, doing this, it does definitely make it pop off the page a little bit better than it would if I was pencil sketching. But if I was using pencil sketch detail, I'll probably, um, it'll probably look, it'll come out as such as well as, as uh, I would have done with anything else. Um, right now, I'm using a fine point pen to detail the face around the eyes, around the, the, the snugs, coloring around the face, yeah see, now I'm starting to think maybe I should left that as a pencil sketch, erasing some of the pencil sketch out of there, just to clean it up a little bit, using some cross hatch lining there to darken the, the areas around the body which are, you know, dark. What you guys think? Should I have left it as a pencil sketch, or just does it look okay um, inked? You tell me. Add some texture, show like his fur. You know, it's not like a smooth, like flesh skin. 
So, you know, here we go. Every artist signed his work. And there's my Lucarios. What you guys think? Hopefully, you give this video a like. You tell me if you if you if you enjoyed this um, workshop. And um, again, I like to thank the uh, Deer Park Public Library for inviting me over to do this workshop with you guys. Again, this is Mikhail Supreme from Night and Day Anime Studios. Um, and this was basically really fun. This is my drawing workshop for learning how to draw um, video game characters. Uh, we did Mario, the Inklings, and also the Karyos from Pokemon. Um, hopefully they'll have me back to do more workshops with you guys. And uh, if you did any great drawings, please share it with the library. I would love to check it out and see how it went. And um, you know, I wish you guys a very blessed day. Thank you for hanging out with me. And this is Night in the Anime Studios, and thank you, and have a good night, everyone.